submarines, the hell-diving, fathom-eating battle boats of Uncle Sam's undersea navy. Of all varieties of vessels operating with our national naval forces, the submarine is the most unique. A little more than 25 years ago, the only ship that deliberately went below the surface of the water was one that was scuttled. Today, the submarine flaunts its fins in the face of Davy Jones. And the fanciful romancing of Jules Verne is an accepted reality. But contrary to the popular conception, each submarine is not operated by its commander as a private navy. The boats are organized into squadrons and attached as units to the fleet. Each squadron has its own tender or mothership, which serves as a mobile base. It is completely equipped with a machine shop and facilities for repairs and refit. torpedo is the traditional weapon of the submarine, but because its cargo space is limited, it cannot carry a large supply aboard. The mothership is a floating magazine, storing in its special vaults enough surplus torpedoes to supply the tubes of the whole squadron. Special diving crews are attached to the tender, charged with underwater repair work. machines need fuel in order to operate with efficiency. So food, oil, and other necessary supplies are put aboard preparatory to a practice diving cruise. The Navy regards its submarine service with special pride, for its craft are masterpieces of mechanical perfection, and its crews are more than seamen, they are trained technicians as well. They must be, for the sub is little more than a monster engine in a watertight shell. There is no room for the extra refinements of the capital ships. Here, everything and everybody has its place and its purpose, be it a man or monkey wrench. The efficiency of our undersea squadrons guarantees the boast that they're the best boats that ever washed their conning hatch with black water. Standing out to sea, the squadron gets underway for a few days of deep water maneuvers. Constant practice with these intricate vessels is vital to keep the service in fighting trim, for inactivity rusts both men and machinery. The submarine is similar in many respects to a destroyer. Lightly armed, it can perform scouting and reconnaissance work, convoy the slower ships and lay mines. Its primary value, however, lies in its ability to submerge and launch surprise attacks on large, heavily armed vessels. For one well-placed torpedo, will sink or disable anything that ever slid down the waves. Way back in 1800, Robert Ford, inventor of the steamboat, designed the first practical submarine. In 1898, America was the first nation to include undersea craft in its naval forces, and since that time has maintained a subservice fleet equal to any in the world. Besides the intricacies of surface navigation, the sub-commander must be versed in the course of undersea currents and the topography of the ocean floor before he dives his ship. vessels don't spend as much time underwater as is commonly supposed. They normally only submerge when attacking or escaping an enemy ship, when scouting in hostile zones or when avoiding a storm. In general, her decks are dry, for her cruising operations are always on the surface, under the power of her oil-fed diesel engine. But this is no yacht club cruise. It will be their objective to locate and sink by torpedo fire a target ship somewhere in this vicinity. As the general order prepared to submerge is given, the crews stand to their posts, for the quarry has been sighted. 
Swiftly, methodically, with no panic or confusion, they carry out the precautions that make her watertight. And then on to their battle assignments in the electric innards of the diving boat. Last to leave the bridge, the captain secures the watertight hatch and descends the conning tower ladder. When all is shipshape below decks, the order to submerge is given. The oil-fed diesel engines are switched off and the power replaced by that of huge storage batteries. The diesels require an air supply to operate, and so electric motors are always used when submerged. They are slower, but are silent and require no oxygen. Valves are open, permitting seawater to enter huge ballast tanks, weighing the ship down. The speed with which the water is allowed to enter controls the rate of vertical descent. The boat is kept level by balancing the water in port and starboard ballast tanks, and with the aid of stabilizing fins attached to the outside of the hull. At periscope depth, which is about 15 feet, the submarine cautiously approaches its objective. Every man is ready and alert at his post, for here is one job that calls for split-second timing and an almost automatic response to commands. The periscope is the eye of the submarine. Without its complicated series of prisms and reflectors, the boat is blind and must rely on sound to locate adjacent ships. But their quarry is only a few thousand yards away, and the crew of 70, each one a perfect example of physical fitness and emotional control, know about their navigational routine as though they were running a donkey engine in a brickyard. Only the snap and dispatch of their performance betrays the supercharged tenseness in the air. The crosshairs on the periscope lens and the calibrated dial set the exact position of the target. In the torpedo room, the tubes are loaded and ready. A final checkup. The sub is aimed directly at the service craft. The order is to fire. Two direct hits. Upon the order to surface, intricate machinery is set in motion, deflecting the outside fin so that the ship noses upwards. At the same time, Powerful jets of compressed air will blow the water ballast from the forward tanks to lighten the bow. As the sea water is forced out of the remaining tanks, the submarine continues its upward progress. Almost as soon as the conning tower breaks water, and while the decks are still awash, the crew is on deck to man the rapid-fire gun. For besides conducting a torpedo attack, they must be able to defend themselves if they are forced to, or if they should be surprised while on the surface. exercises will draw to an end and they'll head for port. Sailing on the sea and beneath its surface is a strenuous and exacting life, but it's thrilling too. For the same romantic urge that inspired man to put a motor on wings and fly, inspired him to fashion a hull that could submerge at will and cruise the forgotten trails of sunken continents. The men that ride and guide these ships are a hardy lot, hand-picked and rigorously trained. But their post is more than a job. It's a career of adventure and high ideals dedicated to the service of their country. Mess is still the favorite indoor sport for those not on watch, with cribbage a close second. While 40 Winks is always popular. And so homeward bound with America's undersea men of war. The daring submariners who draw her first line of defense through the waves as well as on it. The Submarine Navy. Thank <laughs> you.